Now, in my previous video, I did an introduction to binary search trees. And there I gave an overview of what a binary search tree is and the kind of rules that it follows. Now, in this video, we're actually going to start implementing a binary search tree in code. And in particular, we're going to create a method to insert new nodes into the tree. So we're going to build out this tree right here, which, as you can see, has a root node of 20. And then below that, we have two child nodes, a node with a value of 10 on the left, a node with a value of 30 on the right. And then each of those child nodes have two more child nodes each. So let's start fleshing this out. In order to build this binary search tree, we're going to create two classes. We're going to have one class, we'll call it BST for binary search tree. And this class is going to consist of the root node of the tree, as well as any methods that we want to use to do things like inserting new nodes and searching through the tree, for example. And then we're going to create another class. We'll call it class node. And this is going to be used to actually create the nodes themselves. So let's start off with the BST, binary search tree class first. We're going to create a constructor method. And this method is going to be run whenever we create a new instance of the BST. So when we create an instance of the BST, what we want to have on it is we definitely want to have a root node. And we'll just initialize this to null. Now our node class, we're also going to create a constructor on that. And this one is going to be initialized with three different things. It's going to have a value, which in our example are going to be numbers. And we can say this dot value is going to equal whatever value gets passed in. And then each node is also going to have a left child, which we're going to initialize to null, and a right child, which we're going to initialize to null as well. And the way we can instantiate our tree is like this. We can say const, let's call it tree. We use the new keyword, and we can say new BST. And when we instantiate it, it's going to have a root property, which is going to be set to null. So we can give that root property a value by saying tree dot root equals a new node. And we'll pass it a value, which in our case, we want that root node to be 20. So let's go ahead and let's log out to the console, the tree itself, and see what we've got so far. And here you can see we've got our tree object. We have a root, which itself is a node with a value of 20. And at the moment, it has a left child and a right child, which are set to null. Now, for this project, I've set up a package.json file. I did that by running npm init. And I did that because I want to install a little npm package called treeify, which can help us to visualize our tree a little bit better in the console. So I'm going to npm install treeify. And then we can use it like this. We have to bring it in first, so we can say const treeify equals require treeify. And then instead of console.logging tree, we're going to console.log treeify. And there's a method on it called as tree. And then we pass in our tree. And it also takes a second argument, true, which will help to see the values on all the different nodes. So let's save that. And now let's check that out in the console. And you can see that it just displays a little bit differently. We can see we have our root with a value of 20. And that root has left and right child nodes, which right now are just null. So anyway, you can choose to install that if you like. Now, before we write any more code, let's just take a look at kind of how we're going to go about inserting new nodes into this tree. So, so far what we've done is we've inserted a node to be the root. And you can see that here, this node with the value 20 is going to be our root node. Now, let's say I want to insert another node into the tree. Let's say I want to insert the value 10. So what our code needs to do is it needs to ask the question, is 10 of lesser or greater value than the root node, which is 20? And of course, it's less. So we know it's going to be a child to the left of the root node. Now, this isn't like an array where we can just iterate through all the elements by index. We're actually going to create a variable. We're going to call it current. And we're going to start out by assigning that to the root node. And we're going to use this current variable sort of as a placeholder. So you'll see what I mean in a minute. So like I said, we know that 10 is going to be a child to the left of the root node. 
So then our code needs to ask the question, is there already a child node to the left of the parent node? Now, if there isn't, like in this case, there isn't anything yet, we can simply assign the value 10 to the left child node, like that. So now let's say we wanted to insert another node. Let's say we wanted to insert a node with the value of five. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the value of the node which is assigned to current. Each time, current is gonna start at the root. So current right now is 20. We know five is less than 20, so we know it has to go to the left. So we're gonna check the left child node and our code is gonna ask, is there currently something as a left child node? And since we previously inserted the 10, there is. So we're not able to insert the five here. What we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna to have to update current now to be that left child node with the value 10. And our code is gonna be looping. So it's then gonna ask, is five less than or greater than 10? Well, it's less than 10. So the next question is gonna be, is there a left child node of 10? And we can see that there isn't. So we're able to insert the five there. And this is how the process is gonna go as we insert more and more nodes. Of course, if any of those values were greater than the 20 or any of the child nodes, they would have gotten inserted at the proper places to the right of those nodes. So hopefully now we have somewhat of a conceptual understanding of what we need to do in the code. So let's go ahead and let's put in our insert method. We're gonna do this on the BST class. So we'll do it like this, insert. It's gonna be a method and it's going to take a value. Because we're gonna use it like this, we're gonna say tree.insert. And in our tree, the next node that we wanted to insert was a node with the value of 10. So we would call tree.insert and pass in the value of 10, which is gonna come in here. And the first thing that we wanna do here is we want to check if there is actually a root node. What we did was we kind of manually created a root node here by saying tree.root equals new node with the value of 20. But if we hadn't done that and we called insert and there wasn't a root, we would want to insert whatever value that we passed in to be the root. So we could say if this dot root doesn't exist, this dot root would be a new node with the particular value that was passed in. And then we could just return this, which is going to be the whole instance, the whole tree. So actually what we should do, instead of saying new node here, since we're going to be making reference to that new node possibly multiple times in this method, We'll just define it once up here. We'll say const new node equals new node with the value passed in. And then we can just put that here. So really quickly, let's go and test that out. Instead of creating the root node like this, we'll comment that out and we'll say tree.insert 20, which is the value we want for the root node. And let's log that out to the console. And oops, it looks like I made a spelling mistake here. I had new vode instead of new node. So let's try that one more time. All right, and there you go. You can see, once again, we have the root with a value of 20, and we have left and right children, which are null. So at this point in our code, we should definitely have a root node. So you remember that placeholder that we assigned, the one that we called current? Well, let's assign that root node right now to be current. And now here is where this whole looping process is gonna come into play. Where we try to insert value, we check to see if the value that we're trying to insert is lesser or greater than the current value. And then depending on whether we're going to insert it to the left or the right of the current node, we check to see if there's already a node there with a value. And if there isn't, we're going to assign the new value to that node. However, if there is a node there with a value, we're going to continue looping. So let's use a while statement, and we're gonna pass in true. So everything that we write inside of this while statement is going to continue looping and looping and looping until we meet a condition that allows us to return out of this loop. So let's say that after the 20, we want to pass in the value 10. So in the while loop, we're gonna check if that value, which is 10, is less than current dot value. So if this 10 is less than the root's value, so if 10 is less than 20, because right now current is the root, so we know it's gonna be the left child of 20, but then we want to check, is there something already there? And if there isn't, well, that's easy enough. All we have to do is assign current.left to equal the new node. 
and then we can return this. And that'll break us out of this while loop. However, if there was something there, if there was something on that left child, we want to reassign that current placeholder to now be current.left. So as we saw in that diagram previously, when we check the child nodes for the existence of a value, if there is something there, we want to move that current placeholder down to that child node. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna cause the loop to continue looping, and it's gonna loop until there isn't a left child, at which point the new node with the value that we're trying to insert will get assigned to current.left and we'll return this and break out of the loop. Now so far we've only checked for the condition where the value that we're trying to insert is less than current.value. But of course, we also need to mirror that basically and check for the condition where the value is greater than current.value. So all we have to do here is do exactly what we did here, but now for current.left. So if the value which we're trying to pass in is greater than current.value, let's see if there is something assigned to the right child. If there isn't, simply assign the right child to be the new node and then return this and break out of the loop. However, if there is something there, we need to reassign current to be current.right. So, so far we've inserted 20, which will be the root value, and then we've inserted 10, which if we've done everything correctly, should be the left child node of that parent node. So let's log it out to the console. And here we can see we've got our root with a value of 20, and that root has a left child node, which you can see here, with a value of 10. Let's go insert the five other nodes that we want to put in here. We want to put a 5, a 15, a 30, a 25, and a 32. And let's log that out. And here we can see our whole tree. Root node with a value of 20. And you can see here the hierarchy of child nodes, which have all been assigned the correct values. Now one last thing we can do is we can check for the possibility that the value that comes in will be equal to the current value. So in other words, that might be a duplicate, like something like if we said tree.insert32 again. Well, we'd wanna have some check on that so we don't cause an indefinite loop. So let's say that if the value coming in was equal to the current value, let's just return undefined for now. And running that should just print out the tree. Now, as I said earlier, the binary search tree is recursive by its very nature. So we keep having these groupings of a parent node with a left and a right child node. And those keep repeating. So another way we can do this loop, instead of using a while loop, we can do this recursively. So a lot of this code is gonna be the same, but I'm gonna change it a little bit. Instead of a while loop, we're gonna write a function within this insert method. Let's just call it add node. And the basic difference is instead of with the while loop where it just keeps looping automatically, in the cases where we find that there is a child node existing and we want to loop, we're going to reassign that current placeholder as we did here. And then we'll simply call this function recursively. So within the function, we're calling the function, right? It's called add node. So we're calling it once again, and the function is going to continue looping until we meet these conditions where we can assign the child node to be the new node in return. So then we have to do the same thing down here for the values that are greater than, and we would call the function again. And the thing that we can't forget is that we have to invoke the function initially. So we have to call it here to at least get this process started. So let's once again log this out to the console and make sure that things still work. And you can see here that they do. So this is a recursive implementation, whereas the previous one was an iterative implementation. So thanks for checking out this video on binary search trees. If you liked the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. I'll see you next time.